In this video, we're going to talk about the hardest part of your tech career, starting it. Hi, my name is Mike Gibbs. I'm the founder and CEO of Go Cloud Careers. I'm an enterprise architect with approximately 25 years experience, but I've also spent two decades helping people just like you get your first tech job, get promoted in tech, uh, negotiate raises in tech, and I want to help you start your career. I have to tell you, the hardest part of your tech career is probably going to be starting it. And I can give you a personal example. Prior to working in tech, I was a nurse practitioner. I was practicing internal medicine in Philadelphia. I had a very good job. It paid me very well. And I was also midway through a second master's degree. I was in an MBA at Drexel University uh, to take me further into healthcare leadership. But the key was that I loved tech. In fact, I love networking more than anything I could think of. When I got home from work, all I did is I just played with tech because I just loved it. And one day my wife and I made the hard decision, it was my wife's suggestion, that I just start working in tech. And that start, that uh, getting started was really terrifying because I was giving up something I worked my whole life in. I had a six-figure investment in my previous education and then some, and all of a sudden I'm swapping careers for the unknown. So if we go back to that saying, uh, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step, let's talk about that. The hardest part of this transition is career is going to be really to just get started. And when I mean get started, I mean really getting started. So getting started is not watching a couple videos here and there and feeling good about it. Getting started is not uh, trying a little thing here and there when you're spare time. Getting started is when you decide to say, I'm going to do this and this is my future and I'm going to be successful. Now, what does that really take? It's going to take a lot of courage and it's going to take discipline too. And I'm going to talk about the difference. It's going to take the courage to get started, the courage to walk in the unknown and the courage to change. And psychologically, that's not normal things for most people. Most people are afraid and courage is not the absence of fear. No, no, no. Courage is what you do in spite of fear. So when I say the courage to get started and the discipline to continue, that's what I'm talking about. So what do I mean by getting started? The first part of determining what you want to do is knowing exactly what you want to do. And I'm going to be very specific why this exactly is there. I'm going to tell you after 20 years of training people, I've gotten some people their first job as enterprise architects, other people their first job were solutions architects, other times people's jobs were security architects. I even got a person, a chief technology officer as his first role in technology. And I'll also tell you, I've helped other people get other roles like network admins and other junior level roles as well. And guess what? It's about the same level of difficulty to get a senior role as it is an entry level role if you do it the right way. But what's the difference between these roles? There is a very different skill set for each role. And you have to have the right skill set for the role. Now, I've done 6,000 interviews in my career. And I'm sad to say that in 5,950 of those interviews, I interviewed highly intelligent people, wonderful people, and even smart people. But the problem was their skill set was diffuse on 50 different roles instead of being good at the job we needed to hire them for. So the first part of getting started is knowing what you knowing what you want to do. And then after that, here's the next courageous phase. You have to get build a plan to get the education to learn the skills that you want for your future career. And depending upon where your choice of career entry is, you may be able to learn this yourself. For example, if your goal was help desk, it's quite possible that someone that gets an A plus and net plus certification, a security plus and a Linux plus certification, they learn, they do some hands-on work in Microsoft and Linux and learn a little more networking outside of that. And they may get that person a help desk or support role. But what if it's a, a heavy duty engineering role or an architecture role? Well, these roles typically pay as much as a physician or an attorney, and there's an understanding that you have a certain body of knowledge for these roles. Now, it can be your first role. I promise you, it can. And I've got a laundry list of people that have taken architecture roles or senior art engineering roles or senior architecture roles as a first role, but they had excellent skills. So I need you to laser tune in onto exactly what you want to do. And then I need you to figure out what those skills are and make sure you've got a skills list for the career you want and then go after that and build a plan to get them. 
Now, the next part is why I say discipline. Sometimes changing careers is not so easy. For example, if I have an engineer that's been behind the desk and coding and configuring technology all over or for the last 10 years, and all of a sudden that person wants to be an architect, and now they're not going to be touching the technology, but they're going to be speaking to the C-suite, giving presentations to the board, giving presentations at conferences, responding to RFIs, RFPs, RFQs, leading teams and facilitating meetings. It's going to be very scary because it's a completely different job and a new set of skills. But you want to hear the best news? You can learn anything. Nobody was born knowing how to be a physician. Nobody was born knowing how to fly a plane. Nobody was born as an enterprise architect knowing how to optimize an organization's people, processes, and technology, or a security architect where they learn to provide the end-to-end -end security or an, an enterprise that might be operating in six different countries or 60 different countries. So we can learn it. We can do it all. So you got to have the courage to get started, and you have to have the discipline to continue. Now, I promise you this. When you go through a big journey, there are going to be hard times along the way. And these hard times are a test for you. They're going to be a test of your will. They're going to be a test of your strength. And ultimately, they're a test of your discipline. And here is where you just have to go at it, use whatever form of mental toughness you can, and just break through the barrier. And I promise you, you can. I've done it many times myself. I've seen thousands of people do it themselves as well. That's where you need the discipline and the energy to keep going. So at this point, I suggest that you remember your goals. And you not only picture what your goals are, you picture what your life is going to be in those goals. I know I did. Imagine your day, your work day, uh, what your status will be like at home, if you'll have more or less time with your family and how that bears to what you want, what it will do to your income and what that will do to your family. For example, would doubling or tripling your income make a big impact in your family? Could you be living in a different environment? Picture your future life and make it clear to you what the outcome is when you get to your goal. And every time it gets hard, continue to focus on that outcome. And guess what? You'll get better. You know, in martial arts, they say pain is weakness leaving the body. And I've been a martial artist most of my life. I don't necessarily believe people need to leave in pain. But I'll tell you, if you keep going and you have a dream and you keep fighting it out, you'll win. So each time, each step, new lesson. And when you're done learning these lessons, you'll have the career you want. You have the salary you want. You'll have the lifestyle you want. And in the end, you're just going to see silly. It won't feel like it was such a rough journey. So get the courage to start. I don't care what career it is that you desire. Want to become a physician? Go to medical school. Want to be an attorney? Go to law school. Want to be a cloud architect, security architect? Go become one. We could train you or you can train elsewhere. I just want you to be successful. Successful. So go after your dreams. The journey of a stars and mile was, begins with a single step. So get that single step now and go after what you want. If you'd like to become a cloud architect, an enterprise architect, a security architect, an AI architect, we have architecture courses and webinars to assist you in your career goals. Join us in a free webinar where we'll go over the architecture role. We'll talk about what we do. We'll talk about all the skills you need. And it's all free live on Zoom. And if you have any questions about your career, we're happy to discuss them with you free on these webinars. The link to these free webinars is in the description of this video. We also have eBooks on becoming a cloud architect, eBooks on becoming an enterprise architect, eBooks on becoming a generative artificial intelligence architect, how to win the cloud architect interview, for example, and or how to win the technical interview, and so many more things. And they're all free in the description of this video. So go grab them. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your cloud architecture, enterprise architecture, security architecture, or AI architecture career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in another video very soon. Take care.